This tutorial requires intermediate skills, takes about two hours to prep and about one to one and a half hour to apply, depending on how fast you want to work. The look itself is fairly cheap to create since you probably have most of the stuff in your house already. But you will need to get liquid latex, some colors, that fake blood and some elemorph plastic. Speaking of which, let's create those brutal teeth. So we pour those elemorph pellets into hot water and when it turns clear, scoop it up and create a little roll. Since the teeth are thick in one end and thin in the other, we stretch out that elemorph plastic and rip it apart. But before we trim and sharpen those teeth, we need to create this bent edge on the thick end of our plastic. This will be used to attach it with the aluminium foil later. So that bent part is very, very important. We flatten it out a little against the table. And to really get that tooth shape going from thick to thin, we pull out the plastic a little bit and then cut it off diagonally. And we create four of them in two different sizes for the upper jaw and the lower jaw. The upper jaw will have slightly bigger teeth, more saber tooth like like that. We also need a bunch of molars, so to create them we simply take off a tiny piece of plastic, shape it like a tooth and then use a nail or a uh, sharp object there to give it that texture and tooth shape on top there. We made a handful of these but as it turned out we also needed those small sharp monster teeth that we usually do when we cut diagonally on a flat piece of elemorph plastic like that in the corner. So make a few of those as well. And as you see on the screen right now, using the same method as we did with the large ones, we create a few of those spiky fang-like ones as well. And then we're done. Next up, creating those jaw pieces. And we begin with the lower jaw. In total, we are gonna create three pieces. This is the lower one. So we flatten that aluminum foil out. Then using this head here to just get a sense of how far we want it to go out from our head. And when we know that, we keep track of where and then fold up the outer edges. And boom, you've got a jaw. A very simple one, but you got one. We're going to cover this in liquid latex so it doesn't have to be neat. There. The parts going up on the side are crucial for the actual application later, so make sure they reach your cheeks well. <laughs> and here we have a, an extremely long and annoying and totally useless clip of Ellie trying to get into that tape and get a piece open there. Doesn't want to work her way. Nope, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> She's going nuts. <laughs> All right, so there we got it. We need two pieces here to keep this construction together and just give it a bit of stability. Again, it doesn't have to be neat. It's just there to keep things in place temporarily. And as usual, we haven't done any test runs with this look. So this is basically created on the fly. Next up, a pretty basic shape, a U-shape like this, to attach our huge fangs to. This is for the lower part, so we're going to use the smaller teeth, like that, and bring them out. Push that bent edge in there to the aluminium foil, push it around, sort of make a shape for it there. Perfect. We got it all right. Make sure it doesn't stick out too long. Something like that. Then we just pull off those teeth and actually glue them in place. Just to be sure they stick there. And again a tiny bit of tape there to keep the shape as it should be. Now you basically have to create another piece like that for the upper teeth. More or less the same concept, however it needs to stick out quite a bit. So you need to match that up with your face. And uh, as Ellie was doing that, it turned into a mayhem of tape and aluminium foil and craziness. So yeah, you just keep watching here. <laughs> 
What happened? She was going at it for quite a while. Da, 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 da. Just fiddling with that concept. And in the end, those are the three pieces needed. The upper one, the lower one, and the actual jaw. Now we need to dress these pieces up in latex paste and to do that and make sure they are in the right location. We actually glue them onto the face cast. And if you don't have a face cast, either you can watch our tutorial on how to create one on your own. Or you can simply glue the pieces onto whatever you have that can give those pieces support as we put them together. The main thing here is not actually the face shape. It's more about the position of the pieces relative to each other. So, for instance, the lower teeth here are attached to the jaw. And as we attach those upper fangs there, you will see that the jawline goes up onto your cheek and is more or less aligned with those teeth. So as long as you can glue it together like this, you don't necessarily have to use a face cast. A little extra tape there to keep stuff in place as we apply the liquid latex paste. Since we get a lot of questions about the latex paste and the process of creating it, here is the full process. We don't have any ratios, but as we say, add a little bit of flour, stir it, stir it, stir it, add a little more, and a little more. And for us, this time, that about did it. Now we have the right consistency. But as you see, it's a lot of stirring and it's a lot of mixing. Now we need to dress those pieces up in that gooey mess. You can always use any kind of small tool there to spread out and distribute that paste all over the place. And with some unmixed liquid latex on your fingers, of course, smooth out that outer edge of the jaw. That's basically the only part that needs to be smooth. The rest, the inside, it's gonna be a fleshy, nasty mess. So again, we are using that small tool to create that fleshy texture in the paste. And of course, then we push in our teeth in a straight line there behind our fangs like they would be in a mouth, probably, maybe. <laughs> so, we need a lot more latex around there on the jaw to create a smooth surface, of course. So we apply it, use our finger to smooth it out. And hey, there's our reference image in the background with our lower jaw ready. We continue, of course, with the upper one, pretty much the same process. Smear on the latex smack in the teeth and make it look messy and flashy. Since this is all aluminium, it's not super heavy, but we do need to create more of a surface to attach it to our face with. So we spread out that latex upwards on to our cheek. Creating this surface here is of course important, but if you don't have a face cast and can't do this properly, you can actually do it when you apply it to your face. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but we will show you the concept of it as we apply it. Pushing more teeth in there, and there are the small pointy sharp ones. For those tiny sharp ones, you can use acrylic nail tips as well if you like. When you're done, leave this whole thing to dry overnight. You go in as a gaming character this Halloween? We have looks from Until Dawn, Mortal Kombat, Pokemon, The Last of Us, Fallout, Silent Hill, World of Warcraft, Dying Light and more to come. When the prosthetic is all dry, it's time to paint it. We are using alcohol activated colors, but as usual, you can use any kind of colors you have access to. We begin with a light red tone here for the gum and we cover basically all the innards of the mouth in this tone. 
with that as a nice base, it's time to create a more dynamic look and for that we're going for a darker red. We apply that dark tone in all the hollow areas to give the prosthetic more depth and dynamics and also make it look a lot more realistic. We also use this dark tone at the base of our teeth. And while we're on the subject of teeth, ours look way too clean and one dimensional. So let's go in with a little bit of yellow here to rough them up, make them look used and dirty. We apply this yellow tone from the base of the teeth and fade it out upwards. Now with that yellow tone, the teeth are looking much better, but we still need them to look more worn down. So to achieve this, we go in with first a lighter brown tone and then a darker one and create streaks and add darkness to the base of the teeth. Again, with the same technique with brush strokes going from the base of the teeth and upwards. Hey man, you really need to go to the dentist. In Swedish is... Hey fan man, and you go to the Now that's looking pretty awesome, but if your teeth looks like that, you uh, probably have a very irritated gum. So let's create that with a lighter red tone. And for the jaw itself, something that is kind of similar to the skin tone you have. And of course, this being a uh, zombie dead uh, weirdo creature, it of course needs to go a little bit towards the purple as well. So it doesn't need to match up your skin perfectly. We also bring in a lot of that purple tone around the edges. And with that purple in place, we go in with additional red along the edge because this is a broken up, cracked up jaw, so it needs to be wound-like. And hey, since we got red on the brush, why don't we let a little bit of that color just to run down the teeth there from a fresh, fleshy bite. With the paint job in place, we apply a layer of varnish in the inside of the mouth as well as on the teeth. And this of course helps to set the color and bring it out even more and it also makes it look wet just like it should in a wet nasty monster mouth. Odds are this dude is drooling so we add a little bit under the chin there as well giving a nice shine there and wetness. Then leave it to dry. When the varnish has set and dried it's time to remove the prosthetic. And we apply powder along the edges here to make sure that the latex does not stick to itself as we peel it off. So as you continue to slowly peel this off, make sure you apply a rich amount of powder as you go. Just like this. Once you get the whole thing off, you might want to clean up those edges a little bit with a pair of scissors. Then it's time for application. But first a shout out to William SFX. Go check this account out. A young, superbly talented guy creating amazing stuff. And also YouTube tutorial. Check it out. Application time. And we begin with a little protection there of our brows as well as our hairline using Vaseline. Don't want that latex to get caught in our hair. Since we are going to be using latex to create a mess around the eyes, we add surgical tape here for additional protection. You don't want to be peeling off latex that close to your eyes. We might as well cover those brows as well. There we go. Now we have a base on which we can create and build a texture that we're going to rough up. Make hollowed skin, make it dry, crackled and whatnot. So apply that latex and then apply cotton. Needless to say, don't be too sloppy when you apply that latex around your eyes because you don't want to get it in them. With, <laughs> with your cotton goggles in place, we soak that cotton in a little bit of latex and using a spatula there to flatten it out. Essentially, this is going to be our fake skin. 
Our eyes wide shut makeup is awesome and it's made just like this, super easy and fast. Might want to check that out later. Make sure that latex is dry, then peel things off. Just pull it up a little, make holes, make little wounds. Use a pair of tweezers if you don't have super claws like Ellie. Mission accomplished. Things are looking like a mess. We actually thought we needed another one there. So create one in the forehead as well if you want to or leave it clean. It's up to you. Your look. Then it's coloring time and we are going for something that kind of looks like Ellie's skin tone but mixed in with purple. So begin to match that up a little bit again. This is not super important to be matched because this is a slimy, nasty monster. But we do need a nice base there. As we go in with that purple to create the wound effect around our cracked skin, we also push that color into the hair just to turn down that contrast between the clean hair and our skin. Switching to black for those holes in the eyes and we basically don't have any eyes in our look. But uh, you can always complete this with a nice set of contacts. Alright, so to add additional dynamics to those ripped up wounds, of course we add a little bit of purple and red around those edges of our supposedly ripped up skin. We extend that uh, dead skin look downwards onto our neck. Basically most of this will be covered by that huge jaw from the prosthetic, but you want some sort of matching colors underneath there, of course. Just fading that into the hair. Going to that shelf to get some black hairspray color. Now we just need to break into that bottle as well. Ta-da! Yay! Uh, Alright. To make sure no silvery shiny stuff is visible through that prosthetic, we apply the black right there on the back of it, as well as on our neck there to keep that darkness behind the prosthetic. Speaking of which, time to apply that prosthetic. And Ellie is using liquid latex because that goes better with her skin. If you are more comfortable with another skin adhesive, go ahead, use that. Apply that latex both on your skin and inside that prosthetic. And then Ellie is actually bending out the edges a little bit here to make sure they don't get stuck on the way in there. Like that and then flap in the edges. And as I talked about in the beginning, that flappy skin is really important to secure that prosthetic in place. And we also apply additional latex there along the edges and extend this whole area of latex upwards. Because when it dries, this becomes one with the prosthetic. So you have a lot of secure spots there to keep it in place for a full night of Halloween fun. And as usual, before the paint job, make sure that latex is dry or you will mess up your brushes. Going in with that same purple tone again, mixing the prosthetics in there to match up that paint job around the eyes and the rest of the face. And if you are wondering why this paint job is fairly rough, it's because we're gonna go back in there with a much lighter tone, closer to our own skin tone, and mix and blend everything together. But first, of course, a little bit of darkness there on the side, and onto the prosthetic as well, which will sort of fade it into that black neck. All right, back to that lighter tone. Mixing that with the purple that's already in place will give the whole thing a much more dead looky feel. Yeah. 
And as you see there with that light tone mixed with all that purple, that necro dead tone is really coming through. This of course being an LA Max SFX tutorial, we go nuts with all the blood here. Mainly along all the edges there of our fake wounds in the eyes. And also around that mouth edge of the prosthetic, as well as a little dash on the teeth. Most of the necromorph creatures in the Dead Space games are bald. But we wanted to make something different, so we actually kept the hair here. And by working in olive oil into the hair, we make it look really dirty, really nasty, and it fits this look really well. At least we think so. And don't worry about getting that olive oil in your hair, because it's basically doing your hair a lot of good. So go on. To give the horror vibe on it, we actually let that nasty hair fall onto the face. And it just looks nasty. Depending on what you are wearing along with this makeup, you might want to add additional nastiness to the rest of your chest as well. So we go in with a little black color and also keep that oil theme going down. And before we go in with a more runny blood, we also add some of that black hairspray color into the hair. Adding to the monster vibe. Little eye fixer upper, and then it's time for that runny blood. And with that blood in place, you are ready. And we gotta say, this came out really, really cool. And of course, if you want to complete it with a pair of nasty contacts, go ahead. Our version is more made to have carved out eyes altogether. Anyways, we think this came out really, really amazing. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and share this video with the world to help us create more of these awesome tutorials for you. I'm not saying we have a Vulcan and a Klingon and a Medusa in the pipeline, but if we do, you don't want to miss them. So stay tuned for this Halloween's craziness on Alimax as a See you in a couple of days. Love you. Bye.